And welcome back to Terra Firmacraft. And on today's episode, um, so basically since the last time, I've done a hell of a lot of exploring. Here's my southern area. Here's my area. I explored this entire continent. There's a lot of copper and stuff over here, which is cool. And it's a little bit right there, which is actually pretty close. But this area right down here seems to be the closest source of copper that I've been able to find. There's just nothing in here. And there's some stuff up here, some platinum, which is cool. You know, I did quite a bit of exploring, but, you know, there's still a lot left to explore along here that I could really take an expedition. I was going to um, do most of my exploring off camera because I feel like it gets a little redundant, but then I thought, well, I haven't really showed you too much of it. So I figured I'd do one more exploring session on camera and then maybe cut some of the rest. Um, I've been extremely successful again with getting trees and like fruit trees and I got some more um, fruit bushes and stuff like that too and so I just can't help but feel very lucky um, with uh, some of the good fortune I've had so what I've been doing kind of is um, I'll be going along here and um, oh, one, one second I I'll be honest, I turned peaceful mode on a couple times when I was off camera just to make it faster. Um, I really got to stop that, especially um, especially as we go forward because I, I just wanted to get some of the grindy exploring stuff out of the way, and I think I really have now, so I think it's only fair to not use peaceful mode. And that's really the only cheating I've done, um, essentially. Boy, look at that. That is so cool. This landscape loads. I'm just kind of crisscrossing the landscape a little bit. Now, I've got my eyes peeled for crops a little bit too because although I have a pretty good bank of crops growing and building up, uh, it's not complete. There are still crops that I'm missing and other crops that I um, might be interested in getting a few more of and that sort of thing. So I'm kind of keeping my eyes open, but it's really not my main priority. My main priority is minerals and rock types. And so rock type is going to be pretty pretty static, frankly, because, uh, well, I pretty much know. Oh, sorry, I pretty much know the rock types of the areas I'm exploring. So I've already, I've already must have explored like that. And so I think I'm going to kind of cut down this way, like directly south and see what I can find but I mean even if I've explored a large swath of land uh, there's a good chance that I've not thoroughly uh, looked at the mineral you know ground minerals and by the way this process that I'm doing right now would probably be better if I had a prospector's pick because then I could randomly um, pick certain parts of the ground and see if it comes up with it Ooh, see if it comes up with anything but uh, yeah, I mean, generally speaking, if it's going to show anything on the prospector pick, there's going to be nuggets on the surface as well. Um, other LPs of this game, I've seen a lot of people use like this sort of wishy-washy language about, oh, well, if you find a nugget on the ground, it means that uh, maybe, possibly, you know, it's possible there's some ore down there, maybe. And I'm going to go a little bit farther and say that if you find nuggets on the ground, I think the... I think it's pretty much a fact that there will be ore underground so I'm pretty pretty comfortable relying on that you know if you if you find or a nugget on the ground and you dig accurately enough you will inevitably find um, ore veins but we haven't gotten to that much yet in this I found some a lot of exposed um, veins mineral veins but uh, unfortunately, very little, very few of them were um, copper. And copper is what you need the most of at the beginning. Boy, that is neat. I don't know what these little circular things are, but it's really cool anyway. So I found some copper in a couple places, including that one place right here on the cliff. And so that's probably... I don't know if I'm officially decided, but I'm pretty well leaning towards that being my first real copper m mine, as it were. Oh, and by the way, this streams mod, I don't know if I've 
mention this. I think I probably briefly mentioned it last time, but I fucking love this mod. I mean, just look. They added this stream. Like, I can, st I can go for a little rafting trip down this stream without even touching the keyboard. It's so cool. And hopefully this chunk loads. Oh, yeah. See? And it's just this cool. It's like a river rafting journey. Like, you could totally integrate that into whatever you're working on. And it just looks so cool from the map. I mean, look at that. The stream goes like that, and it flows into this lake. It starts in this mountain. It flows into this lake. That is so cool and realistic, and I just love it. Yeah, here's the the source point for that little tributary. It's not even a tributary. It's a stream, but it flows into that big lake over there. By the way, don't get confused. This is just unloaded land, not a lake, but it flows into the lake on the other side of the unloaded land. Oh, here we go. So this is kind of what I've been doing. I've just kind of come across a mineral like this and I mark it for later. Typically I don't harvest a lot of them. Um, leaving the nuggets on the ground gives you a pretty good idea of where precisely the vein is gonna be. Like there's another gold over here. And so you probably get the sense that the vein might be like right in along there. Um, I will harvest it if it's copper, cephalorite, or cassiterite because that's what you need to make bronze. And bismuth is, is so p plentiful that I'm just not worried about it. I probably should harvest some bismuth at some point, but it's naturally spawning a lot closer, and quite frankly, you don't need much of it to go a long way. So I've got enough cassiterite and copper now. I think I could probably make about four tools with the, just the nuggets that I found. And so I'm getting really close to the point where I'm comfortable with all that. I think I'm going to go across the northern part there of this lake. i got to think of a name for the lake. If you all have a name for the lake, let me know, and I'll name it that. I like naming little features. Like uh, one thing I named is South Point down here. This is this little, maybe it should even be that, but it's this little elevated area on the southern point of the continent. Um, I like naming bays, I like naming islands, I like naming uh, rivers, and just like just like we do in real life. Um, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to call the, la the lake, but if I, if I don't get any feedback, which is significantly possible since I'm a, not exactly a um, uh, universally watched YouTube channel or anything like that. Whoa, I can't believe I made that jump. Um, so uh, if I don't get any suggestions, I'm sure I'll, I'll think of something. But uh, anyway, I feel like I've pretty well explored this area. So what I'm going to do now is finish this just last little bit before the enemies start popping up. And then I'm going to head back home and I will meet you back there. That is really cool. Is that an island? No, it's the other side of the shore. Okay. Actually, you know what? While I'm over here, I might as well show you this exposed copper if I can avoid getting killed. But let me show you what it looks like when copper is exposed because I think you'll be interested to see that. Now, this, this uh, place down here is probably about a full day's journey from home. In fact, I might head home off camera and time it and see what time of day it is when I arrive home. Um, as long as you're well fed and you can do the sprint maneuver like this, it's really not so bad. Ooh. Okay, there's copper there. And I would harvest that, but I'm under attack, so I'm not going to. Oh yeah, here we go. So that's what under there, you see that? It's just very subtle, but I just wanted to show you that. Now I'm going to get out of here before I die. There's one single exposed copper there. There's a lot more on the southern coast that I don't have time to show you right now, but I think I'm going to cut this here because you know well maybe I'll go a little ways Ooh, there's more copper um, remember that I'm so scared of that spider right now but let me just mark this because it's important and I didn't die somehow okay and there's more down here but I'll see that when I come back for it I would oh I should ungrab that Ow. Oh shit. Oh, I hope I don't die. 
Problem is, you really just don't have time at night to be marking things on the map, so it's a really horrible time to explore. And you can understand why I might have turned it to peaceful for um, a night last night. But I'm going to try to avoid that now and just get home. Um, if you find yourself, I mean, you've seen me do this already in this LP. If you find yourself running into trouble with monsters and you don't feel like cheating like I did last night and turning it to peaceful, then the best bet is to go ahead and um, jump in some water somewhere. It really slows down the faster mobs. Wow, look at all those zombies. It slows down the fast mobs and it... Um, prevents um, spawning near you so it, it um, gives you a little bit of a relief from the spawning. The only danger is of course if there's skeletons that already are after you then you're going to be slowed down but they're not necessarily going to be slowed down and that could be a disaster. The main thing I would say that you want to avoid when you're walking around at night like this are spiders. Spiders are the worst. They're deadly they are fast and they um, well they're just they're just all around troublemakers so you try to avoid the spiders I might I'm really tempted to go grab that bismuth but it's probably a bad idea let me just check my map yeah so I covered a decent amount of ground I, I, I do feel like my earlier prediction that it's about um, a day's travel is probably about right Ooh, more copper um, I've been trying to consistently color code things the way I've been doing with the exposed ore nuggets being red I'm sorry not exposed there's just nuggets being red exposed ore veins being yellow and green kind of and then rock denotation so this would be rhyolite I would simply put that in white putting animals in blue and that's been my sort of general code system for this um, sometimes with the copper in particular I like to you know spell out kind of the shape of the vein oh shoot where's that spider oh crap there he is okay I saw more copper over there though and I really would, wouldn't mind grabbing it but I'm absolutely terrified of that spider right now, but I'm pretty sure I saw some more copper on the ground down there. I think I'm just going to have to avoid avoid the trouble and go around. What I'm trying to do is get over to that bismuth and see if I can grab just a couple pieces because I'm going to be um, probably yet this episode making, oh, don't kill me, making some bronze, and that may mean bismuth bronze or it may mean normal bronze okay this is not good I need to eat and get healthy so I can run faster whoa shit okay thank god I saw that when I did because that would have been instant death okay well we're back well fed so I feel less vulnerable is that it's gold okay oh uh, I've already got that one marked okay Let's see if I can get over to bismuth this is not advisable if you're not... Okay, cannot get to Bismuth, there's a creeper. I'm just going to move along. As I was saying, this is not an advisable strategy, typically, to um, recklessly... Whoa, shit! That bear charged me like a freight train. I'm going to get up here real quick, as fast as I can. And there's a spider. This is great. I'm going to go for this water. I'm so worried that I'm going to die. And, of course, there's a current that's taking me the opposite direction that I want to go. Mr. Creeper, not today. Okay, I finally feel a little bit more relieved that I'm out of there. But there's no more water to save me, and there's a skeleton. This is so scary. I hate terraformcraft at night. It is so scary. But it's kind of fun and challenging. I think I'm going to head to the coast and see if I can't just swim across for the rest of the night because I do feel a little bit vulnerable and just a couple more hits or a well-placed creeper explosion would pretty much finish me off and that would be hella inconvenient. Although not really life shattering because 
I mean, frankly, I just don't have a lot of... Um, oh, did not need that damage. Um, I just don't have a lot of important equipment on me. And I don't have... Um, there's just nothing really significant that I would lose other than just the cool little things that I picked up on my explore. These, th that journey wasn't even that significant because I hardly picked up anything. But... Let me see here. Where is Rayolite? Um, yeah, I'm just going to head for the Rayolite. And uh, while I'm swimming across here, let me just explain a couple things. First of all, um, what I'm going to be doing this episode. Um, one thing I forgot to do at the end of the last episode that I meant to was to make my bed. And so what I'm going to do first is make a bed. I've got a large hide from that bear that I killed last episode or two episodes ago. I think it was the last episode. I'm going to go ahead and make that bed so I can spawn um, in a better location if I die. And then the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to um, start making some metal tools. And I think I've collected enough metal that I can make a saw, a prospector's pick, a pick, and maybe like a, I mean maybe a chisel or maybe a scythe or sickle or whatever it's called. Maybe I should go for the mace. I'm not really sure, to be honest. Maybe an axe even. Nah, probably not the axe yet. But essentially what I want to do is get enough tools that I can really mine um, some copper and um, then work on that as my goal for the probably next episode is to start a copper mine at the most convenient near location. One thing that I am disappointed in and that is always a struggle in this game is that, I don't know about you, but when I've played, really, I'm looking for three rock types in particular that I find have some of the rare materials, and that would be Gabbro, granite, and nice. They're the chi rocks. Gabbro is great because it has nickel and diamond. Um, and they both, uh, Gabbro has uh, cassiterite as well. Uh, granite has cassiterite and also um, the interesting thing about cassiterite, whoa shit! I have got to pay attention. I was like reading the web page about where Cassiterite spawns when that happened. Okay, this is inconvenient. Okay, um, I'm going to cut here and make my way back down to where I died and get my stuff and I will join you back there and I will continue where I left off then. Okay, and uh, we're back. I traveled from all the way up north and I'm just now crossing the uh, lake here. It's uh, the following day from when I died. So I died, the m I think it was night turning into morning and um, I spent that entire day traveling and then the following night traveling and here I am back at my base so basically a 24 hour in-game period of travel and it's about midday I'd say yeah about midday there's the sun uh, but boy I love this angle I love coming upon my little area from this angle because it looks like such a like a little tropical island paradise even though it's not tropical at all Reminds me of this sugar cane. I gotta go check on that and see if it's getting ready. But as you can see, I thought, oh, there it is. Okay, there's my death. That one, I'm going to have to potentially get creative as far as how to get down there and get my stuff. If it's, um, if there's water, that'll be the easy way. If there's not water, then I'm going to have to wait until I get ladders. Unless I want to build like a dirt elevator, which seems kind of, you know, if I'm going to go to all that trouble, I probably should just go ahead and um, make myself a saw and make ladders. So anyway, I'm glad to be back at the island. Let me see if I can get up there. I might sacrifice one of these pumpkins just to climb this. I really want to check the sugar cane. It looks like it's mature. Oh, shoot. I've got to be more careful. I'm going to die again and have to travel all the way back. 
Anyway, I think right before I fell. Yeah, it's 88%. Let's check the other one. This is not my priority for today, but sugarcane is one of these crops that really is tough to farm. And so if I can get mature sugarcane without having to farm it, that is pretty amazing. 90. So we're really close. And just so you know, ooh, uh, it's getting into September now, so ugh, we don't have much time left to grow stuff. Maybe another... Um, couple three weeks really by October things need to start getting harvested if not sooner so I've got plenty of uh, crops that I can harvest but main priority right now is see if I can get my stuff back which is right down here so let's take a look shall we I'm kind of nervous about this I really hope that it is recoverable that is such a cheap area. There's the rhyolite rock salt border. Um, oh good, I can do this, okay. So I'll just break a gravel, get the block update, get the water going down there, hopefully it doesn't destroy the gravestone. And boom, actually I could, if I really wanted to get all crazy, I could explore this cave a little bit, although there will surely be mobs down here. Actually, I'm utterly shocked I haven't seen any yet yeah, I bet there's some back there anyway I don't see any exposed ore which is really what I'm interested in if anything so let's go ahead and grab my ooh this is kind of tough current um, grab my stuff and get out of here use the water elevator just like vanilla minecraft a little bit unrealistic but so that's one thing about terra firma craft that they hadn't done anything to change as far as um uh, water elevators and just being able to no matter what go up in the um, water this gravestone mod is great you just do that and boom you got your stuff back I just want to make sure I didn't miss anything yeah I think we're good okay so I think we're good so I'm gonna go ahead and um, book it back to my area and then we're gonna make a bed and start copper tools and that'll be the end of the episode. Actually, I mean bronze tools, don't I? While I, uh, you know, I guess I should be thankful for every time I die because I keep getting new stuff every time I go up there. So I got some uh, bushes this time and some other stuff. So it's pretty cool. Oh. All right. Well, let's see if I can get back to my area without dying. Should I take the secret tunnel? I have the feeling that's going to be a lot more dangerous during the night. Is it that one? I don't even know which one it is, so I'm going to avoid. I'm going to avoid getting stuck in a tunnel. Um, I guess while I'm heading back here, let me just tell you a little bit about how the um, bronze and copper uh. process works. So for some metals like bronze and copper, and I think there's a few others, rose gold, tin, zinc, for these types of metals, um, you don't have to have any fancy sort of forge or blast furnace or anything. I'm just, I am gonna go ahead and book it through that cave should be fun and exciting and possibly deadly. Um, yikes. Oh, shoot. Okay, where am I going here? Is it down here? I think it's down here. Oh, okay, that is not what I was looking for. Don't die, don't die, don't die. This cave is dangerous, this cave is dangerous. Wow, I'm surprised there's no mobs in there, but that is a good shortcut back to my area. So that is so cool. Okay, well, I feel like I should be relatively safe now. Looks like our olives are ready, maybe? Is that olives? Anyway, no, it's apples. They're not ready, they're just flowering. That orange is ready, though. Or peach, or whatever it is. Peach. <coughs> With these trees, by the way, 
Oh, shoot. Go away. I have got... You know what? I, I gotta stop screwing around with all this stuff. I gotta make my bed ASAP. So let me just do that real quick. Set that down. And find the large rawhide. There we go. Okay, so you just get two hay, like so. And you put... You just right-click that. And there's a monster nearby, so I can't do it anyway. Okay, great. Whoa, he almost got me. That was crazy. Good aim. And there's a creeper next to my trees. I don't want that. I've got to do some better lighting in this area. How long has it been night? Um, I don't know. I was trying to gauge whether um, it's going to take a long time and whether I should cut the movie. I guess what I'll do is while I wait for these guys to get out of my face, I'm going to... Um, explain the uh, bronze smelting process. So bronze is a soft metal as are its constituent parts copper and um, tin or in the case of business bismuth bronze copper tin and zinc I'm sorry copper bismuth and zinc and because they're soft metals you can work them without having to um, I really hate these guys. Without having to um, use a forge, which artificially heats up metal well past any sort of natural process. So the basic idea of early metalworking is you get a pot of clay and you put your metals in there and then you put it in a pit kiln, which is basically just a really hot fire, wait for it to melt, and then you get molds and then you solidify them in molds. That means that you don't have to work the metal at all. You simply melt it together and put it in a mold. Bronze is actually, because it's an alloy, is actually slightly stronger than iron, like crude iron, but far less strong than worked iron or steel. Um, come on, Mr. Creeper. Let's get rid of you. Very carefully. Um, so, the nice thing about that is that you don't have to get, you don't have to have any, uh, I did that masterfully, you don't have to have any special technology to craft up a, um, the things necessary to make bronze, except for your pit kiln, which is basically primitive technology, so... I really feel extremely vulnerable right now, so I think what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Make myself a javelin. Oops. Make an axe. So, what we're gonna do in today's episode, just to finish out, now that we've made our bed finally. So we're going to go ahead and make some bronze and get that going. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some of the important materials for doing so. I'm going to put some of this stuff back in, in that thing. Get the spell right. Get the copper and the cassiterite. And that might be all. Is that all the copper I have, really? Okay. Well... I'm not going to use all this stuff, but I grabbed it just to show you our proportions. So let me grab a couple of these vessels. And we're going to come over here and start mixing. So, and it looks like it's about to be morning, so that should help with the mobs. Oop, there's a uh, mob. Let me kill him. Anyway, um, yeah, thank goodness it's morning. So in order to make the easiest type of bronze to like, okay, first of all, if I wanted to, I could just put copper in here. And if I put 10 of these nuggets, that would give me exactly 100 units of copper, which is enough to make one tool. But I want to make bronze. And so we're going to find our cassiterite. 
I've got 14 considerate, which means that technically if I had enough copper, I could make as many um, as 14 units of bronze. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all my copper in there, and that's 24. And I'm going to go ahead and do 27, because what I'm going to do is add three more tetrahedrites. And then if I add three of these, one, two, three, actually I'm going to do four, and then I'm going to add ten more, nine more of these. So let me show you what I've done. Okay, so tetrahedrite and native copper, for all intents and purposes, is going to be copper. If you add this up, it's 20, 36 copper total plus 4 tin. That's a 9 to 1 ratio equals 40 or 400. You know, they kind of multiply it by 10, but these are 10 apiece, as you can see, by, by holding shift. And so that's going to be 40 bronze. Okay, so I'm going to stick that right there. Now I'm going to show you one more other recipe for bronze. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to pull up my alloy calculator on my other page. Um, or I could actually do it. I think I can do it this way. I think. Okay, so bismuth, bronze. Um, bismuth bronze. Can I can I just check? Um, can I just? Okay, here we are. So I need zinc in an amount of twenty percent. I need copper in an amount of fifty to sixty-five percent. I need ten to twenty percent bismuth. There we go. Okay, so. Basically, what that means is, I mean, you can do that math in your head if you want, but there's an alloy calculator available at infinitepossibilitygames.com slash TFC alloy calc. And you can just Google TFC alloy cal calculator, and it'll be the first one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take my other vessel here, and we're just going to do, like, a little batch of that. So the nice thing about bismuth bronze as opposed to regular bronze is it requires less copper, right? Because the other one requires a 90% copper mix. And actually, I think now that I think about that, I think I'm going to go ahead and um, take this one back oops, and cut it in half because I really want to preserve my copper for now. So I will need one, two, and I'll take the rest of that back. So that's 18 plus two. That's going to be two units of bronze. And then I'm going to make bismuth bronze in this one. So again, it's the minimum amount of copper you need is 50%, right? So I could do 50% copper, 20% bismuth, and 30% zinc or something like that. So let me, let me play with this a little bit. Let me do as much copper as possible. Um, and then some bismuth and some zinc. Okay, so I could do that as far as copper goes. And then as far as um, zinc, where's my sphalerite? Okay, so what I could do, I'm going to go over to my ally calculator in my other window here, and I'm going to do a whole bunch of tetrahedra. I'm going to do like 16 of that. And plus six, and you just have to trust me. I'm doing this on my other window, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and that gives me about seventy-five to twenty-five. And then if I do one, two, three, four, five, okay. Right now I've got fourteen percent zinc, twenty percent bismuth, and that's not good enough. In order to get bismuth, I need twenty percent zinc and twenty percent bismuth. So I need to reduce my bismuth. So one, two, three, four. Um, oops. Something about like that, maybe, or about like that actually would be fine. And so if I reduce that to 5, that gives me 15, 15, and 68. Um, I need to increase my zinc even more as a percentage of the whole. So I have to do that, and then let me get rid of that. Let me see what that does. So if I do that, sorry, my cat's attacking me. 
that gives me 20. Okay, this one will actually produce exactly 250 units of bismuth bronze. And what I want to do is up that by 50, uh, which means five more nuggets of various types. So maybe I'll throw in, just so you know, right now the um, copper is at 64. Unfortunately, that's the max. Gosh, that's about as good as I can get with the amount of cephalorite that I have. So maybe what I should do instead is focus on reducing it by 50 units so that I can save a little bit. So why don't I go like this. Let's see what that does. Okay, so that gives, actually this is exactly right. So 13, 3, and 4 gives me exactly 65, 20, and 15. So it saves me a little bit of the copper, which I can use in my other bronze recipes and it gives me 200 units of bismuth bronze so that's great so I'm gonna go ahead and put that one in and I'm gonna save the rest of my nuggets for later um, now you can look that up online it's probably more practical to do it than to kind of wade through my ramblings there but I'm gonna go ahead and um, put some of these other nuggets away in storage for now okay and that looks pretty good so I think what I will do now is I will grab some clay because I need to make a couple molds. Actually, I probably need to make a lot of molds now that I think about it because I haven't really made any molds yet. Okay, so next thing to learn, let me just get rid of these stupid bubbles, is how to make clay molds because this is what we're going to be dumping our metals into. So let's go ahead and do that. First and foremost, I'm going to get rid of this guy because I'm going to need both pit kilns for this. So I've got, as I recall, enough um, bronze stuff in here for four molds. I can do one, two, three, four, and I have two extras for the next time I, I uh, smelt. So let's go ahead and make some of our important molds. The first most important one that I'm going to make is a saw. Saw, you make a little jagged edge like so believe it's like this and then you make that guy yeah okay so it's like a jagged edge plus a little handle and there's your saw all right the next one we're gonna make is a, a pick head so we're gonna make this just pick shape very simple very easy to remember next one is a pro pick or prospectors pick so we're gonna go like this and we're gonna go like this boom 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 so it's basically a pick and then you surround one side with two extra ones okay and then we have for one more and I think this one is the one that I'm really struggling with, but I think I'm going to lean towards a mace because I really would like some protection out in the field. So a mace is basically just a big square like this, and you go boom, boom on either side, and then you get your mace head. Okay, and then there's going to be one more that I'm going to do, and this is just for general purposes. I'm going to make clay mold. Um, and actually, I'm going to go ahead and use up the rest of my clay and make another group of that. So these clay molds are used to make ingots eventually, which we're going to need to start making anvils. And trust me when I say that you should probably start making them, at least the molds, sooner than later, because you're going to need a lot of them. You're going to need like 10 or 20 of them to really be effective when you start crafting your copper and bronze ingots later. So I'm going to go ahead and make that many and set the other ones down. Okay, so that should be good. So let me go ahead and... Um, grab some of this. I'm going to need one, two, three, four blocks of this thatch. This is why I put it here to use just for this purpose. And four. And then we just simply craft craft window that stuff into that. And then we go grab some logs. not mean to do that okay there we go so there's our logs and uh, gosh you know I don't know if I have any torches on me or not but I probably don't so I may have to try a fire for, uh, fire starter for these and I'm not sure how much life that has in it oh, I guess there's a full one okay and that lit both of them that's convenient so I'm gonna throw that in there because I don't need it anymore 
And then I guess this is gonna take eight hours as we recall. So, oh, 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 that's not good. That is not good. Not good. Um, I guess I'll kind of keep my eye on that tree because I really don't want the tree to burn. So, I guess what I'm gonna do in the meantime is chop down some of these other, oh man, this is gonna be a problem. Maybe if I just chop these branches off. I doubt that's gonna matter, but I'm very worried about that tree burning down. Oh, oh, okay, I guess I can start getting the leaves off this guy. Okay. I'm gonna have to move that apple tree as soon as it becomes mature. It's, I guess it's not the end of the world if it burns because I have a bunch of extras, but it'd be nice to not have to do, deal with that. It's like right before apple harvest, so I'd prefer not to lose that tree, but I guess it is what it is. I may have to lose it. So far, no luck on this um, oak tree. That's concerning. It's not like you're your father's Minecraft, you know, <laughs> where you start punching these leaves and you just get inundated with saplings. Okay, well, that's that was a bust. Okay. Six hours remaining. I guess I'm going to go for these leaves here. Um, oak trees are kind of cool in this game. It, they're a lot, let's just put it this way, they're a lot less ubiquitous and thus a lot more valuable. Just like any tree, really, that's not native to your biome, especially, um, has a lot more value. So I'm really um, interested to see how this wood looks and whether I want to use it for my longhouse or not. I'm still undecided what actual wood I'm for planks I'm going to use, but we're a little ways out from that decision point yet because uh, I'm just now making the saw. Okay, this one yielded a lot more leaves than the other one, so I have expanded my oak leaves by a factor of one or um, fifty percent, really. And we got more to go. This is a great way to get sticks too. Not that you need a lot of sticks, but. Um, and it actually, eventually, you're going to have so many sticks, you're not even going to know what to do with them. I'm going to go ahead and look at this thing, see if I can get some saplings out of this. These saplings, I uh, determined, are hard to get because um, there's just not as many leaves or something. So I might, at some point, oh, there's one, thank goodness, run out of white cedar, although I grabbed a few extra saplings w w after I died and was up north just now, so... I wanted to harvest that one because it looks like it was in the way of the fruit tree. I'm going to be moving all of my um, tree. Ooh, shoot. It did finally burn that that thing. Okay. Well, so be it. I've got plenty of extra. I'm curious if I leave that just hanging there like that, if that's going to turn into anything. At least I have a, a working per a perimeter for these. So that's half done. Um... I'm going to go ahead and harvest these oaks. And then I'll go planting. Looks like my aspen trees in the background grew. That's good. I've not spent enough time at home lately, so I'm, I feel like I've neglected my homestead area a little bit. I hate to plant at night, though, because that's when the uh, skeletons and stuff are out. Okay, let's go ahead and make an oak pile. I think right down here would be good. But that is starting to really decay. If you, by the way, if you have a knife in your inventory and you push D on any food, it should um, cut away all the decay, which um, one little mechanic in this game that is really cool is that decay increases its speed exponentially when there's already decay forming. So 
it really behooves you to um, frequently go through and cut out your decaying um, food. Okay, now that we're waiting on that pit kiln, one thing I would like to do is go ahead and... Uh, why, where is my fresh water? There we go. Um, I would like to... Ooh, that's fun. The skeleton's coming down the river. I probably better get out of the way. Um, I want to go and plant the rest of my bushes because I got some bushes um, while I was exploring. And I guess I'll just go like this. And I've got these blackberry bushes now. These guys are painful. So, you know, if you walk into that, it hurts you a little bit. But they also stack, which is the cool. Ooh, ow. Can I do three? Ooh, yikes. They also hurt zombies. Oh, he's got an ax. Or it's a shovel. Oh, I wouldn't mind having that shovel. I wonder if I can get it off of him. Ah, oh, man, these mobs. Now, eventually, the more time I spend at home here, the more unlikely it is for them to spawn. Yikes, I feel like I'm getting ganged up on. But, uh... But I, th I think that spawn protection dynamic isn't fully functioning yet in this area because I'm definitely not seeing a lot of reduced spawning yet. Maybe just a little bit. Um, so I really should light up the area better. Okay, he's gone. And where's my guy with the shovel? Where are you, dude? There he is. He's way down there. And the skeleton's up here now. That's great. Run away. That music indicates usually that there's a change in day coming, so... Okay, and my stuff is finished, so that's good timing anyway. So let's go ahead and just prioritize this. There's a lot of other chores that I need to do, but let me just do this real quick. So this is a um, very important dynamic in the early game. Um, I've got my bronze. First of all, ow, you dumb crap. Okay. He's walking this way. Let me just kind of run away from him. Okay, so I've got my bronze theoretically down here. Okay, there's spiders up there. I want to avoid the spiders. Okay, I think we're good. Bismuth bronze 200, bronze 200. So what you do is you put it in your inventory. Okay, he's there. In real life, if you went swimming with a vessel containing molten bronze, it would probably cool on you. Fortunately, this isn't real life. And it's raining, that's nice. So uh, that'll probably prevent my mobs from despawning. So you right click the uh, vessel in your hand and then you decide which one you wanna make. So I'm gonna start out with the saw. You stick it in here, it fills over the course of time. You only have so much time to do this, by the way, before things start to cool down. So you wanna make sure you get that done as quickly as possible. Okay, so that one's empty now. So now we just move that out and we move the bismuth bronze in. And bismuth bronze and bronze have the exact same strength, so it really doesn't matter which ones you use. It's kind of just, you know, if you want aesthetically it to look a certain way, maybe, or something. And then the mace head. And by the way, once I get this mace head, I can go kill that skeleton finally if I wanted to. So then once you get the molds done, you know, those are empty now. What you do is you simply go like that. And you got yourself a bismuth bronze mace. Or this one, you go like this and you just remove the mold. And then you just gotta put some um, sticks underneath. And you got your saw, thank goodness. Uh, that is huge. Pro, pro pick and regular mining pick. So you got, you just, I just busted out like four achievements right there, which is cool. Now this, finally I've got a weapon that can do some damage. So see how that spider is just getting owned here? Poning him. Ooh, except for he almost got me. Spiders are still tough. Don't get me wrong. But now the tables have turned, my friends. I'm gonna go take out this asshole skeleton if I can. 
Now, the reason I made a mace as opposed to like a sword, which would be a little bit better for other types of mobs, maces are good against skeletons. Ooh, I really don't like this underwater thing. Okay, but I killed him, so good. He is gone. That felt good, didn't it? There's another skeleton. Should we should I get bold and try to kill him? I think I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. Yeah, so this mace just completely owns these skeletons. And you still gotta be careful, they'll still kill you, especially when you don't have any armor, but hey, that's that's pretty much how it works. So Okay, um gosh, there's so much that I can do now that I have a saw, especially, and a pick. Um, but let me finish planting these real quick. Can I do a third layer? Yeah. That's cool, they stack so well. Um, okay, let me show you what I can do with the saw now. Okay, so... I'm gonna harvest the sycamore tree. And in order to harvest that, I need an axe. Okay, so I didn't make an axe because you can still make stone axes and they're still effective. They're still as functional as metal, except for they just, they don't, um, they have, metal has a lot more duration. So you just click, simply click like that, and you go boom, you got your axe. And then what you do, well, <laughs> you already know this, you, okay, I'll harvest a tree. Get some logs. some logs okay and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run over here to this uh, stone thing which I'm using as kind of my operational base and I'm gonna go boom with my logs and boom with this this saw and you get this lumber you see now I just got 32 plus 24 is 56 okay so there's a few things you can do with lumber but one thing is you can put four in, in like this and make a plank and now you've got planks and then the first thing you want to do with the planks once you get those is build yourself the workbench because what happens watch this boom it expands your thing to that to that higher number now now that it's big I can make things like ladders with sticks like that you see or I can make um, a boat and in order to make a boat I would simply need to do this and actually, I think I might go ahead and do this because a boat will be good for exploring. But you couldn't make a boat until you get your saw because you just don't have the ability to make that workbench. So I'm going to put the boat down here for now so I don't have to worry about storing it. Um, and yeah, it's pretty cool. And now what I'm going to do is, you know, this game is great because it doesn't just turn into vanilla Minecraft now that you can make wood planks. You still have all these recipes that are lumber specific. So this is called lumber, right? these cut logs before they become planks. So I made a tool rack there by doing three on top and three on bottom. And I'm just going to put the tool rack right there. And now what I can do, you can put your saw, you can put your, your old stone knife if you want, you can put your prospector's pick, because you probably don't need that right now, and your regular pick. And I'm going to grab the saw back because I need that still. but. Um, you know, that's a great way to store things that you're not using. So it's great. I'm going to store those right there for now. Finally, we got our bed. By the way, I didn't sleep. I need to sleep ASAP first thing so I can set the spawn. I forgot about that. But anyway, I feel like we're finally making some progress. So what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and take a look at some different wood types and see which one I think is going to be the best for um, our next project, which is going to be our longhouse. Um, and now that we have a saw, there's nothing that really stops us from at least building significant parts of it. It'll keep us safe at night. It'll give us the ability to have um, indoor crafting areas and a fire and maybe even a preparation table if we get to it. Um, Oh, and a couple, of, you know, just let me finish this episode off by showing you two of my favorite things. First of all, if you like this, you can make a chest. 
And let's see, I'm using sycamore, so let me grab some more sycamore. Finally, we can make chests, that's really important. Um, and stop using these stupid containers. So let me go ahead and just use that. Oh, yeah, okay, that's a chest, okay. It doesn't look good, it looks like a log, but you can see it's a chest there. So I'm gonna grab that and stick that right there. That didn't have anything in it, did it? No, okay. Stick that right there, and stick that right there. And then I am gonna go ahead and I started taking these things back to use um, for rainwater and stuff, but I had to use them for nugget storage. So I'm gonna put my nuggets in here. Oh, and yeah, you, know, you might as well store tools on the tool rack if it's not completely used up. So I'm going to do that and use my sharper knife, or my more used knife. By the way, you see these decay numbers here? This is this thing I was talking about earlier. you got to cut that out. Now, with grains, it's a little different because if you cut that, it's going to turn into a slightly different product. But, um, yeah, you can. it's um, still important to do. So I'm going to put all my animal byproducts in this other one or in this chest as well. Get this bladders in there. The bladders, it, my understanding is they can make some sort of um, water carrier, and that's kind of cool. Okay, so that one's empty now. Right, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and put this out in the rain. Oop. And... That one will be empty soon. But let me just um, put this one back out in the rain so I can start storing this rainwater. Now, these, these vessels are nice. But as you can see, they only store... Um, well, this, trust me, it'll be 5,000 millibuckets or 9 items. Now, let me show you something else. I'll grab some sycamore here. Get my saw back out. I'll show you something else. You can go like this, boom, and you can make these barrels. Okay, now barrels do the same thing as these vessels, except for they store twice as much. So barrels are actually better in almost every way than these vessels. I'll still use the vessels. They look cool. They're kind of decorative. But you can actually, you know, if I were to, for example, oops, what did I do? Did I just put that barrel inside the barrel? I have no idea. I feel like I, oh, I put it on my back. Okay, I was going to say, you can wear barrels on your back. And the barrels have um, more slots in them than the vessels. So let me show you that. So out of the rain now, if I click on that unseal and empty it from the water. It's got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 slots there. So it's actually a better all-around storage device than a um, ceramic vessel. So I'm going to go ahead and put this out here. Now eventually these barrels are going to be used to start um, doing things like making um, alcohol and vinegar and stuff like that. But for now, I'm just going to store all the rainwater. We're going to need that water anyway. Um, yeah. Oh, that, well, see, this is weird. See, it thinks it thinks it's still growing from this little notch. It's kind of funny. Um, I guess I don't have a problem with that for now. But let me plant the remaining peach trees outside of the border of my long haul. And... Let's go and plant some conventional trees across the way here. And I think I'm going to call it an episode with that. That is some of the most important stuff in the game that I just showed you. It's been a long episode. Um, it's been quite the adventure. I love this game. It's a lot of fun. Once we start building, now that we actually have the ability to make planks, I think it's going to get even more fun. So I'm looking forward to that. But, um, yeah. If you've been watching, thank you. And just remember, Professor Snuggles is looking out for you. Just explain that catchphrase a little bit. Uh, I have uh, a cat who I've nicknamed Professor Snuggles, and he's looking out for you. He really is. I've been saying that since I started doing LPs. 
Okay, and uh, yeah, thank you, and I will see you next time on Terraformacraft.